and welcome back to another episode of the five stars podcast i'm your host madison uh we got two special guests in town from el paso texas uh what's crazy about their story one is uh an amateur mma fighter and one is an amateur uh, amateur boxer um, but what comes, what's crazy is your guys' stories come from football, though. Yeah. We got Dominique Barry and AJ Hodgkins in the house. How you guys doing? Good, brother. Pretty How good. about you, bro? Good, good, good. So um, I got these guys in town. Um, They're actually doing a, a tag team boxing match for an influencer fight. Um, but what's crazy, like I said, is both these guys can fight. One comes from MMA. One comes from boxing. Um both got a crazy uh, story and a come up of how they both got into it. Both were football players, D1 football players. Well, he was D1, I was D2. D2, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Hey, but you also had tryouts for the NFL though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, that's what's that's what's so crazy about the story. So let's go back to both of you guys. Football. Hmm. That was the one true love, right? Yeah. Growing up. Ever since I was six years old, I've been playing since. Yeah. And I, I think I played for about 16 years. So I was 22. It was like my last season of actually playing. Yeah. So I started off in flag, moved up and stuff like that. Went to like a real small high school. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, got an opportunity to play ball at D2. I was like, when I first started, I was like, I'm too good for D2. Mm -hmm. Like, I crumpled up the, 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 the letter that my head coach sent me, threw in the trash. But when I got no D1 offers, I was like, where's that letter? I, yeah. need, I need that. Find that trash. <laughs> mom, mom, mom. Wait, you throw it out? And so I found it, gave him a call, committed literally on my visit. Um, then after that, went on, had a pretty successful career for career there yeah and then you were playing at oregon right yeah so uh it's funny because uh we we're fighting in southern california this weekend but so uh, i went to a, a bigger high school but i was under recruited because i was coming out of oregon mm -hmm. and at the time just like not very many colleges are passing through portland oregon um a little bit more now but anyway uh, i ended up going to a junior college in southern california uh, i was a two-time all-american there at riverside city college the best uh, junior college uh, football in, in California, and uh, I'm just throwing that out. I think they won state last year. I'm not sure, <laughs> but 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 anyway, yeah, I ended up going to the University of Oregon, and um, and then I grad transfer. I played two years there. I started, I think, 14 games. I played okay there. Thought I was a, a bit of an underachiever there, and I ended up grad uh, grad transfer, and I got hurt my 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 true senior season. I grad transferred to uh, University of Texas, El Paso, and that's how I ended up in El Paso, and I finished my last year there. I was all conference, and um, yeah, I ended up signing a CFL contract, and I opted out uh, to do this fighting stuff, and uh, I was getting into jiu-jitsu at the time, and uh, I was doing my social media influencing, so I'm like, you know, I like, I like creating my own schedule, kind of working on my own time, and then I like the freedom of fighting because... Uh, Again, it's like, you know, you get out what you put in, you show up when you want, you kind of create your own schedule. It's entrepreneur uh, friendly. And at the time, that's sort of what I thought I was doing. And so now we're here. And uh, yeah, we got the fight June 24th in Los Angeles, California. So yeah, can't complain, you know, I'm, you know, so I'm ready yeah, to go so, for that. So both of you guys have really built your platforms very organically with 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 not only the football content, the training content, but the fight content, too. Sure. I want to get into that because. I feel like it's very important in the fight game to really build your social media true. and your yeah, presence true. and and allowing people to like see what you guys do outside the ring. How, how did this all start for both of you when it came to Man. starting social media and really building? So was it in football or was it outside of it? No, so he he got me into social media. That's the funny thing. Like literally one day he was, I saw him like posting on, on TikTok and everything like that. This was during COVID. And that's when like the Rams had just like gave me a call back. Like, hey, we just feel like you're not good enough right now to take a starter spot. Because I was in mini camp with right. them. Like, this is just not your time. So then I was like, I need to find something to do. And I picked up boxing. So I've been doing boxing for a little bit and everything like that. I've been just posting me, you know, getting better at it, stuff like this. I haven't had any fights yet. So then AJ came to me and was like, hey, man, you should really, like, get into posting. Like, I actually bought his course on how to, like, post on social media. Like, and he told me, he was like, bro, I'm most likely going to refund you your money because you're natural at this. Yeah. So he got me into it and everything. And then um, when I started having my fights and everything like that, people started noticing me at, 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 uh, at these events. Because I post, I'm like, you know, this is what I did. I post me losing. I post me winning. I post me getting better. Stuff like that. I've actually posted me getting, like, I, at the state, uh, uh, 
uh, Golden Gloves. Yeah. I got rocked. I'm talking about being every like white noise. Like I'm, I'm telling my arms to swing, legs to move, but I'm just standing there. Most fighters wouldn't post that. I posted that. <laughs> viral video, 200,000 <laughs> views. People are like, bro, that's so real. I yeah. said, I'm just posting the things that people don't get to see. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that when it comes to like building your brand is you can't always look like a badass. Yeah. You have to like show like, hey, like I'm just like you. Cause you want people to follow you for you, right? So that's that's kind of how I built mine, and like, yeah, I show my successes, but I also show my failures too. My most viral video was me talking about why why I got cut from the NFL, four million mm-hmm. views. Yeah. People were like, "Oh, you just weren't good enough." You just no, I wasn't. I was an All American in yeah, college. I was yeah. top ten linebacker. It's just D two NFL just happens to have the top tier. Like I, I can't help. I did. I yeah, gave it all I had. Correct. But I'm, I'm better than like point zero one percent of the population. In football. There's always gonna be people that are gonna talk, man. And it's just and but that video right there skyrocketed my platform. Yeah, I went from yeah. like ten thousand to sixty thousand in a week. Wow. So it's just just being real, like being you on the platform is what it is. And same for you. You were posted during your football career. Or? Yeah. No. So not during my football career although that's something like you know if i was like to mentor a young football like college football player i would tell them to uh, monetize it like try to monet start monetizing there especially with the nli nli stuff yeah, going on now with the nil is crazy because they're, they're, they're able to get paid so it's like you know like like whatever you whatever you're able to post i would encourage you to post but now i had a friend uh, likewise with dom like he just was like hey man like you have this workout page like you know you post your workouts whatever like you you know you're not but you're not like I wasn't creating content at the time. I was just like posting my stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I started creating content and putting some stuff together. I was doing like, I was doing, I was appealing to like, I was doing like get ass fast. And yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, Am I allowed to cuss on you? Yeah, yeah of good? course. Okay, yeah. So I was doing like get ass fast, and I was kind of being like quick baity on uh, TikTok, and but I was getting to it. Like I started selling these programs. My my story is crazy because I was a I was a full time coach at the University of Texas El Paso UTEP. Okay. And I was quality controls, but I was a full-time coach. I was like 22 years old, and I got laid off. Uh, not laid off, but I got I got let go because of COVID. Ah. Like you said, this yeah, this yeah. is around the COVID mm-hmm. time, and um, yeah. So I lost my job. I was making like 55 grand a year, and I was happy. You know, I was like, but but uh, so I lose my job, and um, my boy hit me up, and he was like, yeah, man, like this is how well, maybe you could do something like this. And I started to blow up on TikTok, like like take over TikTok, and. Um, yeah, ever since then, I've just kind of been, like, documenting my life. I started doing the combat sports maybe a year, year and a half maybe after that. And, uh, yeah, people just get down with, like, organic uh, organic content because I'm not hiding anything. You know, I'm successful more than I am anything else. So people think, like, think that it's, like, arrogant for me to post, like, my highlights and my... But I also post my lowlights. I got choked out. My first MMA fight, I posted that. I put, like, all, all my lows that have been... Everything that I've done in combat sports is all uploaded on my YouTube channel. Like, the full thing, like, this weekend yeah. will all be uploaded on my YouTube channel. So it's been it's been dope for people to watch. And I've really developed, like, a, a, a real following that, like, really follows me. And they mm-hmm. kind of, like, are interested in what I have going on. And they're also interested about my potential because obviously like uh there's a ton of potential here for me to me to do better and um and that's what we're, we're after you know so yeah um, i feel like the best comments come from those that are like hey man i remember when you for i've been here since yeah. you first i had someone comment yeah. on mine i've been here since your very first fight mm. i'm 16 fights in yeah almost three years later yeah. they've been yeah. following me for that long wow it's crazy and that's actually like crazy best yeah. feeling ever yeah man. for it's sure like, yo, I, I have a community of people that like legitimately have seen me go from like being able to throw in a stiff, stiff jab to now I can throw that Chris jab and they're like, hey, his jab is, is nice. Y'all gotta, yeah. you have to, you have to pay homage to like how well he's tried to get that better. Yeah, that's, that's like the best thing I love about creating content. How'd but, you both meet? How you guys uh, became so friends? we actually met before we started mm-hmm. doing any of this. We met at Animal House Fitness. Uh, shout out to Adam, Adam mm-hmm. and Animal House Fitness. They came a long way too. But uh, yeah. we met there. Uh, we were he was training, I believe, at the time for. Like maybe the XFL, yeah, NFL, or something like that. that time. And then I think maybe I had I had one year left. I had my last year at UTEP maybe, and that's when we first met because mm-hmm. I think you were one year out. You were one year before me. Yeah. And uh, we met there, and then we kind of reconnected in El Paso, which is right. crazy because we met in Southern California. Wow. Then we reconnected in El Paso, and he's one of the reasons why I started doing uh, 
combat sports in general just because I saw him doing it and I'm like man you know you know at first like it's scary to do it's scary it's, like your first day walking yeah, into for the sure. gym whether you're boxing doing jiu-jitsu whatever and I'm like man I gotta stop being a pussy like I just gotta <laughs> show up show up like he's doing it I'm gonna show up and then I was like the first person in El Paso to start like putting my camera up yeah. now you see everybody in jiu-jitsu <laughs> has their camera up, yeah. you know? and I was just like kind of like it was kind of bold at first because I was the only one to do it but I'm like yo like you know like 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 again going back to what we were talking about earlier like you know i'm trying to monetize everything that i do i want to monetize my lifestyle and at the end of the day that's what i'm here to do and so like just like we got done boxing and training right now you just set the camera up and i'm not pretending i'm not doing anything that i'm you know i'm just yeah i'm just filming what i'm doing in the moment correct and then people are seeing the progress yeah i'm not doing anything extra and I, actually it's funny because i feel that i'm underestimated a lot of times because other fighters and it's funny because we're fighting influencers this week yeah and i'm looking at them like they're influencers like i'm a real fighter i'm not I'm not, I mean, I'm an influencer, I guess. I post content, I create content, but like I really fight. Like yeah. that's what I'm really here to do. Correct. And then the, the fight community sees me as like, kind of like an influencer. Yeah. So they kind of like, and I've been underestimated to my face and I love it because I'm like, yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah. Like we'll see, but you see, I've only been doing this for two years and you see how far I've come. I look like a lifelong wrestler. You know, my, my boxing is probably the, 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 the number one thing I need improvement on, but my kickboxing is pretty good. My, all, all my, my martial arts are growing. And so, um, yeah, going back to what you said earlier, man, it's like cool to see like like it all to just kind of like manifest and come to fruition, you know, and um, that's where we're at now. You know, it's, it's crazy. And now we're here in Vegas doing this interview and uh, we'll be in L.A. And June 24th, we're ready to go, you know, so Rip excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, showcase showcase what, what we've been working on. And um, yeah, yeah, no, for cool. no, for sure. For sure. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Like you guys got both crazy stories and that's kind of crazy how you guys were in Southern California and then, and then somehow yeah, randomly El Paso of all places. It's, it's yeah. funny though because his like, wife is in, yeah right like that's, yeah she's, yeah, she's from yeah, El Paso. yeah 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 okay she's from El Paso. so like we met me and my girl we met in college <coughs> and from college on we were together then we moved to El Paso after after the Rams gave like gave me the boot <laughs> yeah we moved to El Paso because L A is too expensive to live yeah, in. yeah 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 if you're crazy. not making L A money you're not living out there so we moved to El Paso where it's a little cheaper um, I started working for the city and stuff like yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to do other football opportunities like the XFL both times they've been rebooted I was first I was uh, so this recent one that just came out, I was invited to like a pre-draft workout with the with the Washington team. Thought I did phenomenal. I was like, I'm out here. I'm 27, 28 years old. Yeah. You know, doing better than 90 percent of the guys that are here. These dudes are fresh out of college. I'm Correct. Like, I'm the old head here. Yes. Yes. But I'm still out doing y'all. But at the end of the day, it's it's that's what I didn't like about football is the politics side of it. Yeah. In fighting, I control. I control. Yes, all this. you that's do. What, and that's what like. Building your following will do. You have like full control over everything you do when you have a legit following. Mm. Cause it's like I can pitch for bigger, bigger fights, yep. especially if you have like the accolades with it too. Correct. So that's why I love. That's why I love this. So me and my girl, we met there, moved out to uh, El Paso, and just been grinding ever since. What made so. you want to get into boxing though, like fighting? I've always so I was bullied when I was younger, oh, like wow. like bad, because I was little. I was like a hundred and like maybe fifty pounds as a as a junior in high school. I didn't get big until like the going into my senior year. Mm. Like I came in my junior year like 150, 160 pounds. My my senior year I was a hundred and like ninety pounds. That's gross spurt, I, yeah, that crazy gross spurt. Out of nowhere. But I was always a little guy. I was always picked on. So I always was like, I want to be able to fight. Yeah. But I want to be able just to use my hands. Like mm. he, he's always trying to recruit me to MMA <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but I'm like, I just want to use these. So. I was like, I want to go try boxing. And my first time sparring was against this dude who, who does, has no chill. Like, he's one of those dudes that comes in the gym, and he's his sole purpose is just to hurt people. And right. I'm like, all right. So I was scared the first time I sparred, and I was terrified. Mm. Like, I'm like, y'all sure I should be getting in here? Got rocked a few times, and I was like, it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, it yeah. hurts, yeah. and it, it sucks, but it's really not that bad. It's it's interesting, too, because, uh, like, well, again, we both come from football. Mm -hmm. So the, the I always tell people the collisions in football are greater than the collisions that you, like, in MMA or boxing. Like on like 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 on average, I would say. Well, I would say because it's a yeah. ten yard. You have a ten yard full head, full sprint. Head. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it, it, it like getting used to like like you know like slipping and like yeah. understanding mm -hmm. like your defense and understanding like you don't have to get hit. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that with a black eye too. <laughs> <laughs> no, we both got one. <laughs> yeah, I'm in here with a black this eye. Past week. Nah, but <laughs> honestly, you don't have to get hit. And then also, it's like it's not that like like football. Uh, you know, like it, it prepares you for like full speed yeah. collisions, impact. It's like the 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 physicality for the sure. threshold is kind of like 
Alexander, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, God. From UFC? Yeah. Volkanovski? Yeah, yeah, yeah Volkanovski, uh, yeah. the rugby background. It's like, it's a really good way to transition into like wrestling, into boxing, into, because it's a contact, full contact sport where you're used to, you're, you're used to receiving that contact and still being able to like critically think. And that's why I think uh, combat sports are the, the, it's the greatest it's the greatest sport on the planet, whether that be like, boxing, jiu-jitsu, whatever it is, you know? I feel like a lot of... But the thing is, a lot of football players have to get past is that fear of getting hit. Cause yeah, no, yeah, no matter, for sure. Like, yeah, the yeah. combat sports really exposes, like, your your your, your heart. Mm. Like, if you, you take that one punch that hurt a little bit too much, yes. and you're like, I didn't like that. Yeah. Like, are you going to keep stepping forward to try and slip it, or are you going to run away the whole time? Yeah, right. And that was, like, the biggest indicator for me that, yeah, I want to do this is because I got hit hard right and i was like well maybe if i slip this way yeah come back and that's when i knew i was like I'm, I'm built for this but like i didn't back off and try and run away i stayed in i wanted to keep going I got my ass whooped a few times i was like no nah, i want to keep going i got to keep going until i get better my biggest motto is like i'm gonna get my ass whooped it is what it is but i'm gonna get better if if you if you drop me with a right today you're not gonna drop me with the same shot mm. tomorrow plain and simple like i'll be back and i'm gonna figure it out and so you both are amateurs right now. Mm -hmm. You said you wanted to do the Olympic qualifiers, right? Yeah, so I got that coming up in September. Um, that's the 9th to the 16th. Uh, I go for a week and four days, four fights. I got to bring it home. If I, if I win that, I'm a national champ, and I qualify for the uh, na uh, the Olympic trials where I can try and go become an Olympian. So that's the That's, that's amazing. The yeah, and then both of you guys eventually want to go pro, though, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Take over the sport. I want to yeah. go pro this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go pro this year. Yeah, yeah it's time. I, I, after the Olympic, uh, after the national championships, I'm 20 fights, and I'm like, all right, I feel like I'm ready. Yeah, I have the power. Like I'm, I just needed to develop the the output and the pace. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And same with you. You want to go pro? Yeah, no, eventually, and I'm not in a rush at all. I have right now. I have two MMA fights. I'm still pretty green. And again, MMA is a like super complex sport because it's like you're mixing all the martial arts together and. Um, it's just super extreme, you know, it's super extreme. And um, so for me, you know, I'll know, I think I'll know. And uh, I trust people around me like to tell me like, hey, man, like, you know, it's probably time. Like, again, like we, we do this social media stuff, you know, for me, it's not about the money. Um, Ice Cube, uh, I brought it up in the car. Yep. It's like, if you're not willing to work for free, you know, you might as well just quit now. Yep. And that's the way it is when you're working for, towards something great, you know, I, I believe. And, and so for me, you know, it might be another year and a half. It might be another six, seven fights where I really get comfortable in there and start coming into who I am when I'm sparring every day, you know. And then once I get to that guy, you know, I, I really believe in my, my ability and my skill set and my athletic ability and, my, and also my ceiling, my potential. And I know that um, um, when it's time to go, uh, and it's time to start protecting a record, you know, that's, uh, that's, you know, kind of what we're waiting on is like whenever I'm ready, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see right now. I'm um, two fights. I have two fights in four months and then we'll do this June 24th. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, I'm on the, whoever wants it gets it program. So hey. <laughs> starting this weekend and then whoever wants it after that, we'll, we'll get it. And that's why I, you know, I love combat sports because I think it's the most gangster shit you could do. And that's why, that's why <laughs> I gravitated wants to, to it. Their hands. Every yeah. man wants to be able yeah, to Yeah, no, you know, and that, going back to what he said, it's not about, like, for me, it wasn't about being bullied. It's not about anything like that. But, you know, you always, like, there's there's been times when, where my heart's been tested and I didn't live, you know, I didn't, like, I didn't back up. Like, you know, where, and, and, and now I know exactly where I'm at. And I know that, uh, f you know, without fear, there's no courage. So mm. I, I, I'm always going to be courageous when there's fear. And fear is my compass. Fear is going to uh, direct me in the, the, the places I need to go. And so, like I said, anybody who wants it gets it. You know, amateur fighting is crazy. We were talking about this on the airplane. It's like anybody can show up. You, I mean, you don't know. Yeah. Anybody can show up. You know what I mean? So it's like. Yeah, you it's don't like, know who your opponent yeah, is. Yeah, it's like after I, school. One of my and, opponents you know? lied about his record. He was he told our coach, he only have like two. I have three fights. Well, two fights. Come to find out, he had 17 fights. I was like, well, why did why did you want to... I won that fight. But wow. Yeah, I was like, why would you do... Like, that's what happened. You never know you're fighting amateurs. Like, yeah, you know. my, like for me, they can look me up on social media. Mm -hmm. I pulled when I was in state, they was, oh, it's Mr. TikTok. I said, don't do that, because now y'all have seen all my videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, all yeah. the heavyweights that yeah, I'm fighting, yeah, they say, oh, it's Mr. TikTok. Yeah. So, like, that's the thing. Like, they know who they're fighting. I have no idea who's pulling yeah, up. Right. Like, and then in MMA, it's crazy, because it could be an amateur fight, but you're fighting a Muay Thai champion. 
You know what I mean? Like, so, like, you got to be ready. Is, that's that, that's why I'm telling you, like, about being pro is, like, you know, like, for me, like, I, like I, obviously, like, I think that, that I have the ability to, to do it today. Like, yeah. I, could, I could do it today. You could be but, doing it's like a D1 wrestler. But, but yeah, he, my, my first amateur fight, the dude wrestled at Missouri, and that's of no excuse. You know, I Jesus. still feel like I out-wrestled him at some points, you know? And so, like, my point is, is you got to be pretty, like, you, you either got to be super dominant in one thing or you got to be pretty well-rounded yeah. everywhere and have ways to win the fight and going back to us having the football background I feel like for me my creativity and my willingness to adapt when I'm in there is going to be my, my biggest asset because I'm not like oh fall back on wrestling because I'm not a wrestler it's like oh I don't fall back I, I don't have any I don't have boxing to fall I don't have anything to fall back on so I'm doing what works for me and I'm I'm, I'm manifesting that when, when when I'm out there so um again yeah it's crazy though like Amateur fighting, you, you don't know who's gonna show up. No Amateur MMA, they could be a, they could be Golden Gloves, they could be Muay Thai champ, they could be D1 wrestler. You don't know, so you just gotta go That's out there and, and and be the best <laughs> version of yourself. You know, you know what I mean. So where does this energy and motivation come from, both of you? You guys are like super focused and super determined. Intrinsically, it's hard to. There's a lot, a lot of men in today's day and age that have this type of focus and locked in on like some type of dream or or goal that they have. It's actually very motivating to hear it from both of you right now. For me, He's listening to you guys. For me, it's the, it stems from like how I was raised. Like I didn't have my dad growing up. My dad wasn't in my life. But I had father figures. So I had my grandfather. I had my uncle. I had my older brother. Um, my grandfather, he played in the league. Um, my uncle, he was like a high school, all this other stuff. They raised me to really be like, you know, any whatever you see in your sight you want to accomplish mm -hmm. i don't care if i'm playing the piano i don't care if i'm doing origami i want to be the best at it not to beat everybody else but just as like this is i want to be the best at it i want to be who i am and, and i want to represent myself so like for me that's it's just always been that motivating factor of like i'm gonna be the best version of myself at this yeah people always ask well who are you competing nobody i'm not competing with anybody I don't call out anybody on social media. I don't. I don't talk. I don't talk shit to anybody because I'm in my own lane. If yeah. you talk shit to me, that you're going against the best version of me. Yeah. So yeah. It's just the intrinsic motivation for me. That, I mean, I don't know. I'd say just the fact that, like, I think it's the most complex and the most um, it's the most complex thing you could do on the planet. It's the hardest thing you could do on the planet, in my opinion. I'm speaking about MMA, but also boxing, also jujitsu, also. Judah, also wrestling, all these things are the, these are the hardest things that you can do, and you have to overcome yourself before you step foot out there. I believe, and I think that um, that's what drew me to it. Is like, okay, football's over. Okay, like you know, I was coaching at UTEP. I told you I, I was happy, but I wasn't really happy because it wasn't a there wasn't something new and creative, and and like there was nothing really to be energized about because I was working for a system. But but now I could really flourish because everything I do, like what I'm sitting here doing right now, this is my work. You know, I owe this to my family. So, like, my family motivates me. Like, uh, you know, like, I go out there and and uh, I try to bring, you know, pride to, to my family, to be honest. And I think this is the, the, the hardest way to do it outside of being a Navy SEAL and going out and dying for your country. And I think uh, that's what's gravitated me towards uh, mixed martial arts, combat sports in general is just because you know what better way to really find out about yourself than to really put yourself out there and, you, get and you know in the face. You, get, you, get, <laughs> you get you start you you start you start like what's his name uh, I don't I don't follow boxing very much but he's a uh, uh, maybe Terrence Crawford I think yeah he has a great quote he's like yeah people think boxing is sweet until you go out there and you start really getting it yeah. like until you get in there and somebody's really getting mm -hmm. it and you get you get clapped and then now you get to see a little bit about yourself as a man or you go out there and you get broke in front of everybody mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. front of your family in front of like and then again that's a different dynamic for me and him you know i have a nine hundred thousand person platform whereas like when i lose i gotta post it i'm not hiding i'm not gonna hide content it's true so, so i lose and it's like i got choked out it's like well you know i got broken you know and, and you have to be honest with yourself about that and so that's what's gravitated me towards you know martial arts in general is the honesty within yourself and i don't think there's any better way to get it you could be you could be the wide receiver for the new york jets and be like man shit i'm not getting the ball man uh and have a whole our, our line sucks that's why i'm not but you go out there you box you go out there you grab whatever you're doing there's no excuse there's no you know what i mean there's 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 it's it's you and another motherfucker that weighs the same amount as you mm -hmm. and so what are you going to say what are you going to go tell you know you could go lie to your your wife and tell her you know 
whatever the fuck. But she, you, you know, at the end of the day, at the at the, at the bottom, the, the the bottom of it, like there's no excuse. You know, no, you're it's right. like it's like you find out about yourself, and, and it's good to feel that fear, and it's good to u- utilize that fear when you're training and when you're like, oh man, shit, I don't want to get up. You know, you start thinking of your opponent. I, you know, and I don't want to get broken. You know, mm. so um, I think. I think that, you know, just being a gangster, and I think that's the most gangster shit you could do is step into the ring uh, or go fight for our country. And that, that's just what I believe, and that's what I, I believe that I'm made to do. So shit. if this doesn't work out, that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> now that, now that you I'm know a what I mean? Now that I'm a father of two daughters, Nala and Naya. I got them tatted on my neck. Um, I, so I take my daughters to all my fighting events. I want them to see me win, lose, or draw. I want to see. I want them to see me because I want them to see their father. First off, how dangerous I am. So like their confidence saying, "My dad will kick your ass and your dad's ass." Like I want, <laughs> I want my daughters to be able to say that. Yeah. And then two, I want them to see like as as people we have to overcome certain things. So yes. they came to my last my my last two fights, right? And I lost the last one, and I thought I won. I was, in my head, the one where where I posted where I was like, yeah, you know, the the judges gave him a decision, and I was I was I was crying after the fight. I was pissed. My daughter there's a video of my daughter coming up to me, you know, consoling me like, "Daddy, it's okay." And she's four, and she already understands like that yeah, it. it's okay. Yeah. So then my next fight like, I fought the same dude, ran it back, beat his ass, unanimous fucking decision. Came back, first thing I did was I showed my daughter the trophy, and that shit brought me to tears. She says, you won, Dad. And she remembered who I fought because I showed her the clips. So it's just stuff like that where it's like, my new motivation is my daughters. Even my daughter now, she does uh, jujitsu. She mm. just went against some kid today. Yeah. She's bigger and stronger. She lost, but she made it all the way through the entire round of just fighting, being scrappy. When she first started, she wasn't like that. Wow. So now she wants to fight. She wants to be aggressive. She wants to win. She gets mad when she does. She almost cried. My, my girl told me she almost cried at the end of the thing because she was like, oh, I thought I had him. Yeah. I, I could have won. I love that. I love to see my daughter grow and want to do things like that. So uh, being that image for her is what I want. Is is one of my motivators too. That is awesome, man. You guys are both super inspiring in how you guys do it. Kind of, uh, your guys' relationship as friends is crazy too. Just how it all came to be mm-hmm. and stuff. Now you guys are in Las Vegas right now. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah, take yeah, off yeah. to LA. Getting ready to get paid. You yeah, know, you know, like yeah. it's it's a it's a fun Two time right in. now, you know. And you guys have built that platform. And then going back to that, it's like. Yeah, you post your fight, people are going to expect to see if you won or lost. You, ha- you, you got to post it. You got to post it. They they are, they're the wait- exactly. That's yeah, how you fact. know. Some of these guys will won't post their after yeah, fight it's like, because bro, what happened, bro? Yeah. Like, I'm you're, not going to I stalled you're, a few times. I don't want to fucking post this. Uh, it's like it's like the, it's like the ego. It's like, bro, like, you know, like everybody's everybody's lost. John Jones hasn't lost. Floyd Mayweather hasn't lost. Yeah, most most motherfuckers are losing though on the, on, the, on the journey and like again like I you know everybody has their own journey and like that's what like I'm using my platform to share is like my journey from going to from a real influencer I used to be a real influencer I used to be talking about get ass fast <laughs> and all this other shit and doing influencer shit and then now I'm like I've tra- totally transitioned even over the last year and a half my content's always changing like every like I'm changing I'm growing as a person I'm getting older I'm getting wiser I'm getting all these things things and uh i'm only getting better and um so i'm just sharing that and i think it's cool for people to see because a lot of times you know like you you hear start hearing about like oh it's like oh yeah that's floyd mayweather he's always been like that oh that's this guy he's always been like that because they they didn't document their 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 nice. the humble beginning you yep. know what i mean and it's yep. like now it's money mayweather oh now he he's always had all this shit it's right. like nah, no. motherfucker you gotta get up and work mm-hmm. and you gotta and you gotta and you gotta take some there's gonna be some heartbreaks there's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of shit going on you know what i mean and so I think it's responsible for me to share that on my platform and like not duck when you lose like you, you can't not po- like we, we go out in June that's the best part about combat sports too it's like what are what, okay you if I beat him in basketball he might be like oh, shit, I, <laughs> I shit I'd have whooped his ass though you know <laughs> yeah, but it's like you know if he whoops my ass then there's nothing else to say yeah you I'm got gonna, your ass I'll beat you in basketball that yeah it's like matter, you know like. well I'm saying even when we're no, basketball saying. players it's like yeah I'll whoop his ass though you know but it's like combat sports it's like you could talk all the shit you want mm-hmm. but you are gonna have to go out there and that's why I love it because it's like say what you want now you know what I mean but but mm-hmm. on this day, this is when you're gonna have to you're gonna have to show up, you know, up like up. you know. So um, anyway, I think I you know, and I'm excited for this weekend, and I'm excited to be in Vegas, 
and it's it's been good so far yeah <laughs> you know yeah i mean it's the grind it's why you guys are here because you guys have actually you know you did it yourselves from yeah. the, from the bottom up you know and that, that's another thing you know and i will talk about that is the and let me know if i'm being long-winded but like nope. you know like like a lot of people will say oh you know i'm jealous like I, I like they'll be like oh i wish this would happen for me and i'm like you know people don't know what i go through every day people don't know what i sacrifice to uh create my platform to live the life that i'm living i could go get a, a job at enterprise and make 50 grand a year and have some benefits and yeah. do all this shit but i i grind i struggle i sacrifice i go through a lot of ups and downs and then motherfuckers will look at me and say they wish they had some shit i had and i'm like well motherfucker i wish i had health benefits yeah, you know, if I go out here and break my leg, you know, I don't, I, there, I don't have any. But again, it, it's like, it's like without, without sacrifice, there's no glory. It's like mm. I, I have it on my YouTube channel, like no nuts, no glory. You, yeah. you don't have any nuts, you'll never experience any glory. Mm. You know, you can live a super modest life, and, and that's great too. Like, and I envy that. I envy that when I'm like, man, fuck, man. You know, like I'm looking at some of my peers, like some of the guys I played football with, some of the people I went to high school with, and I'm like, they got like real, real financial security all this and all that and I'm like I'm busting my ass like I'm I'm training hard every day you know I'm coming home I'm betting on myself you know I'm really doubling down betting on myself and I'm putting that out there so like you know if I had any advice to anybody that that wants to do this is like do that just like you know if I was 17 I'd be like motherfucker just do this bro just go in all in on yourself fuck everything else you know like just like burn I, I just bought a book today it's called burn the boats I haven't started reading it yet we talked on the airplane mm -hmm. but it's like about like there's no there's no plan b it's just like yep. plan a is gonna work burn the boats fuck it and we're gonna go towards plan a period yeah you know and that's it like that was my mentality for football it was like it, there is no plan B. Everybody, up, what's your plan B? What's your plan B? I have, yeah, I have my degree, but I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do if yes. I don't make it in football. I didn't have a plan. Yeah, that's but all I made. You I made. Yeah. yeah, and like that's so when I when when I did finally was like, all right, football is it's done. All right, what do I need to put my all into next? Yep. And then I stumbled into boxing. And then, like I said, I have, I have a real, like, obsessive, like, personality. Mm -hmm. So when I find something that like really I want to challenge myself with. Yes. I give everything to yeah. it. I'm talking like I'm putting my, my newborn daughter down to bed, 8 o'clock. I got a key to my gym, letting my coach, hey, I'm going to be at the gym a little late, just letting you know if you get the alert. So I'm there till 1030 at night training, trying to get better. Because yeah. I'm like, I want to I want to be better. Yeah. I don't want to. In football, I was never the dude where I was like, I just want to be here. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. You feel me? I'm just playing college ball. Yeah. Nah, dude. I've, I've, I've met oh, thousands of players who just come and go because they just wanted to just be there. They were okay with just being average. My coach had a thing. He said, there's the top 10%, the middle 80, and the bot bottom 10. that shouldn't even be there. I never wanted to be in that middle 80. I wasn't, I wasn't in the bottom 10. <laughs> that wasn't me. But that middle 80, I, that, honestly, I hated that more than the bottom 10. Yeah. Because those guys are just there. They're mm -hmm. just existing. Mm -hmm. just, just, oh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I don't really achieve to do anything. I took it personal if, like, if I wasn't leading the tackle the, yeah. the season that year in tackles. Yeah. I took it personal if I wasn't one of the best on the team. I took it personal if coach didn't trust me to do certain things because I wanted to be that guy. Yes. And that's how And that's now how I carry myself in football. So, I mean, in boxing. So, with that personality, I'm really obsessive about something. Like, really, really obsessive. So... I love and the that. best thing, the best and last one, the best part is, is like again, like we could say whatever, but like I just know that when I go, I'm gonna manifest because yeah. it's already been done. Yeah, the work's already been put in. You hear, you listen to Kobe Bryant, you listen to Floyd Mayweather, you listen to Michael Jordan. They they all say the same things, which is just work extremely hard. Yes, and then and then when you go out there, it's just gonna be a manifestation of what you've mm -hmm. the time and the, the energy that you've already put in. You can't get ready on get on 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 game day. Yes, there's no there's no button you push, you know. And that was something that uh like you know from mo transitioning from football to 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 now mixed martial arts is like mixed martial arts. It's you, motherfucker. You know, it's, it's not anybody else. There's nobody to blame. Nope. So it's like if you don't understand something or you don't know something, it's like you better get that shit ironed out right now. Or or guess what? You're gonna be the dude back there backstage, not very confident. In and really feeling it because it's about to get real you see what i'm saying yes. and that's what that's the difference between any other sport and combat sports combat sports you'll be sitting there like fuck man i, I didn't do sh I, I didn't i don't think i did this i didn't do that mm -hmm. and those thoughts are normal those thoughts are normal to have but if you did everything that you say you went to bed on time uh, conor mcgregor just said this on the the t or whatever the, the the yeah the tough he's like go to bed when you say you're gonna go to bed wake up when you say you're 
train when you say you're going to train. And then guess what? When you get to the game day, it's like there's no there's no there's no Correct. back and forth dialogue. Yep. It's like you didn't listen to your inner bitch and now you're you're here and you're ready to let that manifest and so that's why like for June 24th uh, like yeah, I'll be nervous. Yeah, I'll be like, you know, I'll be, you know, a little bit of fear, and, and that's all. Those are all good. That'll just make me more focused inside the ring, and um, but it'll be nothing of like, oh man, I should, I knew I should have, you know, it's none of that. Mm -hmm. It's like put, you know, always put your best foot forward and uh, work as hard as you can, and then let it manifest, you know. And only, know, only you know if you're working hard, you know. You know if you're the guy that. When it's time to spar, you took the last round off, or you you took the last 45 seconds, or you didn't cross the line. And in football, I thought the coaches were just talking. Yeah. Like, uh, it's always the motherfucker that... But in combat sports, guess what? The dude that doesn't touch the line is going to be the dude that mentally goes out there and mm -hmm. breaks and folds. And the dude that did touch the line, uh, uh, crossed his T's, dotted his I's, is going to be the dude that goes out there and allows his work to manifest. And I believe right. that. So anybody that, 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 that beats me has just... They were just more ready for that moment, and I accept it for what it is, and and, and I got to get ready for the next moment, mm -hmm. and uh, that's been my mentality, and and I know uh, I'm just only getting better, you know. So, the day, yeah. The day I started getting better at boxing was when I I listened to my coach. He he coaches national champs. He's like mm -hmm. three national champs that he coaches, and he we had like right before one of my fights, he came up to me, he looked me dead in my eyes, and he said, "You've been running, you've been working, you've been sparring, you've been working your ass off." trust that mm. trust every rep yeah. that you've done every sprint that you've done trust your conditioning trust that you've worked hard enough to be in this moment so when you get tired out there and you're like damn i don't think i can throw another jab go back to the time we was sparring and you was i couldn't do it but you threw five more jabs like right. i said right. trust that so that's the moment i started getting better at the sport i think it was like when i was at my 10th my fight yeah and that's when i started really like noticing my volume start to increase my pace start to increase it's once you trust the fact that you've been working your ass off everything comes together or just trusting your skill uh trusting your skills like George St. Pierre, I was listening to him yesterday, and he's talking about the uh, same thing I'm talking about right now, which is the fear and the the the. But but he's like confidence and skills, confidence that your skills are going like. Yeah. But you need both. You need yes. a little bit. You need 100%, 100%. both. You need the confidence, and then you also need the skills though. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you have all the confidence, you, you, we all know one guy that has a ton of confidence and no fucking skills. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then we all know a guy that's crazy sound, like he does crazy shit when it's sparring, but then he doesn't have the and confidence the to go out there. Timid. and Manifested, so it's like uh, one of my coaches told me something similar before my last MMA fight, which is like he was like, bro, like he was like, think about it, like you have so many ways to win. Yes. And I I meditated on that, and I was like, that's all he really said, and I was like, you're right, like the last dude, he was a better wrestler, maybe I I don't even like saying that he was a better wrestler, but okay, like that's one skill, that's just one thing. So he's like, if shit gets to, and you start to self doubt starts to creep in, start to think about it. It's like, bro, you have more skills than one. Like you're you're rounded where you have, and that's going back to what I was saying earlier, which is like. Um, like I feel like I'm extreme and I don't have a base. Yeah. So I'm like, I could kind of bounce around and just make what I have sick jujitsu. I have sick wrestling. Okay. I'm getting out wrestled. Let me try my jujitsu. Okay. Or let me just try to stand up. Yeah. I was, I was piecing the dude up on the feet and, uh, I didn't just trust that because I was a little bit out of body is my first fight. I'm like, Oh, you know, it's like a little bit, it's, it's crazy. It's nerve wracking. And it's like in, in, in my last fight, I'm more in body and I'm like focused and I'm like, I'm present and I'm in the moment. And I think that's the biggest thing is like you start stacking fights together and you start to become more aware and more uh present in the moment i think that's the way to hit your flow state where you're like where you're going next level to the flow state and you're you're getting to where you would be at when you're sparring you know what i mean so but um yeah anyway it's been a process it's been a process it's been a journey yeah no know? for sure so. are any of you guys uh is there any current fighters that you guys are you guys like to watch students of the game as in boxing or MMA, any fighters you guys watch right I, now? I like a lot of. I mean, I, I take a little bit from everybody, man. Mm -hmm. Like, like especially like MMA because there's so many different, like you know, there's Styles so many different things, and, yeah. you know. Um, I, I don't know boxing well enough, but I I, I like Alexander Volkanovsky because of his rugby background. I like I like watching a little bit of, like I said, like a little bit of everybody. Somebody, some people have sick boxing. Alexander Volkanovsky also has long arms, but he's kind of stockier. Yeah. And that's kind of my build. I have super crazy long arms, but I'm a stocky build. Yes. Yeah. So he's kind of in punching range but like right outside of kick range yeah, yeah. he's throwing sick so any and, and then he has sick wrestling he's a rugby player so 
um like he's somebody that i watch but i'll honestly i'll watch anybody i'll watch i'll watch uh i'll watch old boxing i watch all time like usually that's what i'm watching on usually me and my wife will sit there and just watch like old old combat shit yeah, yeah, yeah. where that'd be like it could be old boxing it was like i just watched a floyd documentary a couple weeks ago yeah, yeah, yeah. getting ready for this kind of like yeah, trying yeah, to put myself sure, sure. it was uh i don't know if you guys seen it it's like the first uh hbo series with uh floyd in uh what's that dude's name when he fought, was it De La Hoya? De La Hoya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like a four-hour segment. I'm going to beat you till you call me pretty. <laughs> that, 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 that right there was, was iconic. For me, like, I I probably, I first started off, like, I was like, yeah, I like Anthony Joshua. Because, mm. like, he was buff. He was another, he was one of those buff boxers. That he To me, he can box. A lot of people give him shit because, like, oh, he can't box. He's he's an Olympian. He yeah. actually is really good. He's yeah, a yeah, gold for medalist. Sure. For sure. So it's like. I used to really like trying to emulate my game after him. That was until like I noticed everybody in the heavyweight world was tall. I was like, I can't, I can't stand toe to toe with that. I got to get inside. So I started ad- like adopting a lot of like the cruiserweights from the past. You know what I mean? Like really going and looking at um, what is his name that moved up to heavyweight? Fuck. We got Usyk. No, no, Ooh, I can't, we I got, can't match that pace. Uh, yeah. I can't match the Usyk pace because he, he's he's just constantly moving, he creating those moving. angles, yeah. and he has that southpaw yeah. that I can't really. I'm I'm still trying to incorporate southpaw into my game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like with him, it's that he's constantly on his toes, bouncing. He doesn't look for power shots. He looks to score. Yeah. He adapts his amateur style to his pro style. So it's like for me, like that's that's you can do that, and that's why I like that I'm that I started off in amateur first because guys go straight into pro. I start off at amateur first, really develop. Okay, you have to develop that output and the pace, Ooh. and then mix in the fact that I can sit on my punches. Yes, because I've you like in amateur boxing, you'll lose a fight to somebody that's in better shape than yes. you, but nowhere near the same skill level. Correct, correct. So it's like you gotta, you have to go in and understand how to pace yourself, how to how to output volume. But then when you turn pro, you gotta learn how to sit on those punches and turn them over, that's which true. I have. Like I've dropped guys in amateur. It's hard to drop dudes in amateur boxing. Yeah, the the gloves are bigger, the headgear's there, and the ref is. More more protecting yeah so it's like you have to really like have that snap to really drop so i've had that before so for me like it's i've watched a lot of like the cruiser weights from the past that's who i watch a lot of because i really want to match that the pace and the power they have so where can everybody follow you guys on social media uh fit with jay uh uh fit with jay llc on uh both tiktok and uh instagram and then um aj hodgkins on youtube there you go. For me, can't stop Dom Nine. That's on Instagram, um, TikTok. It's the fittest Shinobi. I'm an anime fan like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then on YouTube, it's can't stop Dom. We're we're growing the YouTube. We're at like two point five thousand followers. So there we're you go. We're growing. Yeah, your TikToks are both crazy though. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mine used to. I don't do as much to. I do more Instagram and and you know honestly you know and uh, my 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 five year plan is this. My five year plan is to have enough uh enough financial liquid to hire like a media a media guy to where i'm no longer having to cut up my own shit and that way i could just like i could just kind of like kind of like An- andrew tate style that motherfucker has so many motherfuckers working for him it's crazy, <laughs> yeah, for sure. son. that motherfucker's everywhere mm-hmm. like all different platforms are so my point is is uh, not i'm i kind of went off but <laughs> like, you know okay. but 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 it's true i'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. as much like platforms we could post my shit the, the more mm-hmm. i could grow my brand but um so yeah that's the five-year plan is to to be able to hire a media guy to where i'm like okay we got this we got this we got that we got this and then maybe i'm cutting up my youtube videos and those are creating my reels my yeah. my, my tiktoks and stuff like that but bro i'm telling you like people people say they wish and all this shit but a lot of motherfuckers aren't doing it because if they, they wouldn't be wishing if they were doing it because i'm telling you i get i get home from training hard as a motherfucker just like anybody else and then i gotta cut up my videos i gotta mm-hmm. i gotta find a sound i gotta i gotta i gotta do a caption i gotta do my hashtags then i gotta post that shit on and then by by the time I'm done with all that, it's time to train again. You know what I mean? So it's like a, it's a nonstop grind. But again, right now, I would say we're grinding right now. Mm-hmm. But hey, not really, because you know what I mean? I'm, I'm having a great time out here in Vegas. 100%. Getting ready for Let's, June 24th. Let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> also, also, I have my family page, too. Mm-hmm. That one's, that one's I think, like 140K. Um, oh, sick. If y'all want to see, like, my family lifestyle, my kids, my girl, follow it's the Blackberries. That's pretty fun. So I have fun on that page as the well. The Blackberries. The Blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> that might be some more anime. Shit. Bro, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you gotta get an anime man i'm telling you you guys are both awesome man great energy great guys um i hope everybody when you watch this interview take a little piece of this energy the energy that these both have 
Um, it's been an honor, man, and uh, I can't wait for this weekend. We just, we're having fun. June 24th. Well, yeah, it's time to have fun. Showcase. Man. Yeah, we're having fun. fun. Time to have fun. Living the dream and having mm-hmm. fun, right? We'll take some shots of that. Uh, we'll, how do you pronounce that? Tequila? Scene Verde. Scene Verde. Yeah, tequila. I'm you guys excited are... about that tequila. I bro. do like yeah. tequila I, I too. I'm not so. very much. Uh, I'm not yeah. very much a drinker. Same. But um, celebrations we'll are celebra- we'll, yeah. occasional celebrations. Mm-hmm. We'll call for it. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. to do a little bit of that, and um, we'll check that out. And uh, yeah, June 24th, bro. Yeah. June Y'all better 24. get y'all tickets because I'm putting on a showcase. Hey. He, he's he's trying to knock him out. He's insane. Yeah. I'm I'm out there to embarrass some people. Yeah. Like I'm I'm in and out. I'm 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 putting on a showcase. I'm, like, out, there, it, I'm out there to finish the job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give y'all a show. He's trying to make it a quick I'm night. Trying to, maybe, it. maybe we'll start with you first. Let's round. do that because yeah. he, he gonna get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm trying to finish the job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I'm let trying, me let me tenderize him. You yeah, yeah, yeah. There should be nothing said afterwards. It should be like the job has been finished yeah he's just gonna turn to you and be like i did my job but look yeah. you, you got him from here yeah. man. that's job all i'm gonna do finish you, the that? job isn't finished if they're both like nah. if they're both still willing they both must submit yeah they must submit at some See, point during I, the fight i get the joy out of like seeing someone not have an answer like it's like you are thoroughly getting your ass whooped right like yeah. i feel to me, me i feel like that right there is like that's way better than knocking somebody out he just wants to knock somebody no out. that's not true this I, man wakes up on demon time no right? <laughs> he woke up as a that's demon that's not true that's not true i'm, I'm saying i want to outclass him and then i want to uh, find him yeah. <laughs> that's it I want to. I want to. I want. Well, it should be a class act, and then at the end, they should be like, "Hey, we're done. We're done." You know yeah. what I mean? That's I it. That. That's what a fight is. You know. So what I mean? round round one, I'm going in looking yeah. embarrassed, and then when he comes in, he can do what he do, and then I'm gonna come in for my finish. Like I'm, I'm just trying to show the skills. I'm trying to really use these, man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I appreciate you both coming on, brother. I appreciate this has you, been bro. Amazing. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you. Bang.